This is the soundboard that I made for my Dungeons & Dragons group. It looks like a big convoluted spaghetti mess, but it's actually pretty straightforward. I'm going to do a quick demo, then we'll take it apart. I'll explain how it works. Uh, this is the most heavily used one. A lot of puns and inappropriate jokes in my group. Um, I thought the Wilhelm scream was a little on the nose, so instead I went with a screaming goat, circa like 2005 YouTube. Right now, for most of these, I do just have a single sound effect um, linked to that button, and I've thought it, I've been thinking about going back and adding additional ones because you can have it cycle between multiple sounds for the same button. So I thought about adding additional roars just for some variety. Come on, there we go. Yeah, I bought cheap buttons, and sometimes they don't always trigger. Um, this one I just use whenever battle starts. That way. Pokemon theme just kind of lets everyone know roll initiative. Um, this is these two are a little bit longer. I just drug them into Audacity, did about the first 10 15 seconds, and then had a fade down, fade off, fade out, I guess. Um, and then the most fun one is this one. Whenever they're fighting like a big, like the end of the session boss, whoever gets the final killing blow on it, I'll hit this button that way. That kind of signals to them, hey, you killed the boss, now you have about 10 seconds to describe how you did it in a fun cinematic manner. This one I do have, Trigger, uh, goes back and forth between Immigrant Song and Sabotage. So, I've thought about going back and adding some variety to some of the other ones. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's in the simple little project box. I'll take it apart and we'll walk through how it works. So the heart of the project is the Adafruit FX soundboard. I have one of the older ones in here, but some of the newer models have built-in amplifiers, so you can wire the board directly to a small speaker, um, which would be perfect if you're doing something very compact, like a prop or cosplay or something where you need to add sound effects in a very limited amount of space. Um, and then now you can buy them with various amounts of built-in storage. I forget how much this has. It's like 20 megabytes. It's not very much. It's just enough to hold a few sound files. And the best part of this is there's no coding. It's Even though it's the same color scheme, you don't have to uh, program anything like you would in Arduino. Um, there's just a simple key of how you name the files. So you just drag your sound files. You plug this in via USB, and you just drag your sound files directly onto the board like it's a flash drive. And there are eight pins. They are labeled 0 through 7 because computers. Um, and so here's the key. If you just want to do just the basic, just hit the button and that sound plays, you do a T for trigger, followed by the two-digit number. So if it's pin 1, it would be 0, 1, pin 2, 0, 2. And then your extension has to be either a wave or .ogg. Um, but then you can drag your sound effects onto the board, and depending on which pin gets shorted, it plays the corresponding file. So most of these I just have uh, just as a basic trigger, but you can have them cycle between multiple sounds. Um, so you can have two or three, four uh, sound effects tied to a specific pin, and it'll cycle between them, or you can have it randomly shuffle between them. You can have sound effects loop. I believe the first time I saw someone use this board, they had put it in a tank, and they just had engine sounds, so when the tank turned on, it would just play engine sounds looping in the background. So there's all sorts of fun applications for it. I think it's about 20, 25 bucks, not super expensive, and very, very user-friendly. You don't need to know any coding, no. Even though this looks like a lot, all these are off-the-shelf parts. They're all clearly labeled. They all have good documentation. You don't need to know anything about circuits. You're just connecting point A to point B. I guess A to A, B to B on corresponding boards. Um, the only tedious part was wiring up all these buttons. I have pins at 0 through 7, each going to a different button, and then I have the ground coming off of here. I just have an exposed copper wire going, and they're all tied to it. Jumps over here, and so every time you hit the button, it shorts the corresponding pin to ground, and it plays the sound effect, depending on how you named it. Um, the speaker, I just pulled this out of some computer speakers I found at Goodwill. Um, they happen to be an appropriate impedance that it worked, and they're a good size for this box. Um, I had to make some mounting brackets for it out of aluminum. Just drilled and tapped some screws. So it screws into the bottom, 
and that way the speaker is kind of lifted off the bottom of the box a little bit. I just cut this hole out and put these tall rubber feet so that way when it sits on the table there's plenty of room for the sound to kind of come out. It's kind of interesting depending on what surface you set this on you get different sound quality. Um, so you have like a hard wood table will sound different if it's sitting on a book versus if it's sitting in someone's lap obviously. Um, yeah it's all pretty straightforward. It looks like a lot but it's really only two or three boards and they're all clearly labeled. So here's power going in, here's sound coming out, here's leads to all the buttons. And yeah, it's uh it's been working well. I've had different iterations going for probably a couple years now, probably about a year and a half. And then before is rattling around in a wooden craft box and then Looks like in May I found this box and transferred all the contents over and rewired it. That's that's about it. Thank you very much. To power it, I'm using the same Adafruit Power Boost that everyone else uses in their projects. Um, so we're going from a 2500 lithium battery, going to the Power Boost, and then here I'm having the power come out of this, and it's powering both the soundboard and the amplifier. Um, I drilled a hole in the top, that way I can easily plug in a USB cable and recharge the battery without having to take the box apart. It's been working well.